Okay, I am back. Um, the next chapter is called The Woods Are Alive. Somewhere around the boring part where the guy named Rolf and the oldest daughter are singing, you are 16 going on 17, Jack nudged me. Dude, I've got to go pee, he said. We both got up and kind of hopscotched over the kids who were sitting or lying down on the sleeping bags. Summer waved as we passed and I waved back. There were lots of kids from the other schools walking around by the food trucks, playing the carnival games or just hanging out. Of course, there was a huge line for the toilets. Forget this, I'll just find a tree, said Jack. That's gross, Jack. Let's just wait, I answered. But he headed off to the row of trees at the edge of the field, which was past the orange cones that we were specifically told not to go past. And of course I followed him. And of course we didn't have our flashlights because we forgot to bring them. It was so dark now, we literally couldn't see 10 steps ahead of us as we walked toward the woods. Luckily, the movie gave off some light. So when we saw a flashlight coming toward us out of the woods, we knew immediately that it was Henry, Miles, and Amos. I guess they hadn't wanted to wait in line to use the toilets either. Miles and Henry were still not talking to Jack, but Amos had let go of the war a while ago, and he nodded hello as they passed by. Excuse me, I changed the page. Be careful of the bears, shouted Henry, and he and Miles laughed as they walked away. Amos shook his head at us like, don't pay attention to them. Jack and I walked a little farther until we were just inside the woods. Then Jack hunted around for the perfect tree and finally did his business, though it felt like he was taking forever. The woods were loud with strange sounds and chirps and croaks, like a wall of noise coming out of the trees. Then we started hearing loud snaps not far from us, almost like cap gun pops that definitely weren't insect noises. And far away, like in another world, we could hear raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Oh, that is much better, said Jack, zipping up. Now I have to pee, I said, which I did on the nearest tree. No way was I going farther in like Jack did. Do you smell that? It's like firecrackers, he said, coming over to me. Oh, yeah, that's what that is, I answered, zipping up. Weird. Let's go. I am going to read one more chapter, and this next one is kind of long. It's called Alien. We headed back to the way we came, in the direction of the giant screen. That's when we walked straight into a group of kids we didn't know. They'd just come out of the woods doing stuff I'm sure they didn't want their teachers to know about. I could smell the smoke now. The smell of both firecrackers and cigarettes. They pointed a flashlight at us. There were six of them, four boys and two girls. They looked like they were in the seventh grade. What school are you from? One of the boys called out. Feature prep, Jack started to answer. When all of a sudden, one of the girls started screaming. Oh my God, she shrieked, holding her hand over her eyes like she was crying. I figured maybe a huge bug had just flown into her face or something. No way, one of the boys cried out, and he started flicking his hand in the air like he just touched something hot. And then he covered his mouth. No freaking way, man, no freaking way. All of them started half laughing and half covering their eyes now, pushing each other and cursing loudly. What is that? Said the kid who was pointing the flashlight at us. And it was only then that I realized that the flashlight was pointed right at my face. And what they were talking about, screaming about, was me. Let's get out of here, Jack said to me quietly. And he pulled me by the sweatshirt sleeve and started walking away from them. Wait, 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 yelled the guy with the flashlight, cutting us off. He pointed the flashlight right in my face again. And now he was only about five feet away. Oh, man. Oh, man, he said, shaking his head, his mouth open wide. What happened to your face? Stop it, Eddie, said one of the girls. I didn't know we were watching Lord of the Rings tonight, he said. Look, guys, it's Gollum. This made his friends hysterical. Again, we tried walking away from them, and again, the kid named Eddie cut us off. He was at least a head taller than Jack, 
who was about a head taller than me. So this guy looked huge to me. No, man, it's alien, said one of the other kids. No, 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 man, it's an orc, laughed Eddie, pointing the flashlight in my face again. This time he was right in front of us. Leave him alone, okay, said Jack, pushing the hand, holding the flashlight away. Make me, answered Eddie, pointing the flashlight in Jack's face now. What's your problem, dude, said Jack. Your boyfriend's my problem. Jack, let's just go, I said, pulling him by the arm. Oh, man, it talks, screamed Eddie, shining the flashlight in my face again. Then one of the other guys threw a firecracker at our feet. <sighs> this chapter is hard to read because it's so angering to think that somebody would treat someone like this. Um, I can't even imagine. But this is what August is used to. And I'm so happy he has Jack who's there with him, but it, it is just sickening that um, somebody or some people, because it's a group, would think that it was okay to treat someone like this. Jack tried to push past Eddie, but Eddie shoved his hands into Jack's shoulders and pushed him hard, which made Jack fall backward. Eddie, screamed one of the girls. Look, I said stepping in front of Jack and holding my hands up in the air like a traffic cop. We're a lot smaller than you guys. Are you talking to me, Freddy Krueger? I don't think you want to mess with me, you ugly freak, said Eddie. Isn't that terrible? And this was the point where I knew I should run away as fast as I could, but Jack was still on the ground and I wasn't about to leave him. Yo, dude, said a new voice behind us. What's up, man? Eddie spun around and pointed his flashlight toward the voice. For a second, I couldn't believe who it was. Leave them alone, dude, said Amos, with Miles and Henry right behind him. Says who, said one of the guys with Eddie. Just leave them alone, dude, Amos repeated calmly. Are you a freak too, said Eddie. They're all a bunch of freaks, said one of his friends. Amos didn't answer them, but looked at us. Come on, guys, let's go. Mr. Tushman's waiting for us. I knew that was a lie, but I helped Jack get up and we started walking over to Amos. Then, out of the blue, the Eddie guy grabbed my hood as I passed by him, yanking it really hard. So I was pulled backwards and fell flat on my back. It was a hard fall and I hurt my elbow pretty bad on a rock. I couldn't really see what happened afterward except that Amos rammed into the Eddie guy like a monster truck and they both fell down to the ground next to me. Everything got really crazy after that. Someone pulled me up by my sleeve and yelled run and someone else screamed get him at the same time and for a few seconds I actually had Two people pulling the sleeves of my sweatshirt in opposite directions. I heard them both cursing until my sweatshirt ripped and the first guy yanked me by my arm and started pulling me behind him as we ran, which I did as fast as I could. I could hear footsteps just behind us, chasing us and voices shouting and girls screaming, but it was so dark I didn't know whose voices they were only that everything felt like we were underwater. We were running like crazy and it was pitch black and whenever I started to whenever I started to slow down, the guy pulling me by my arm would yell, "Don't stop." Okay, that's the end of that chapter. Ah, I don't know what to do. That's such a bad stop place to stop. I think I have to stop and do another one. Okay.